Hello, this is Peter with another video. Today I'm going to do an update on this Musabashi. Um, it's uh, the largest banana in the garden by far. Um, as you can see, it's grown quite a lot actually this year, uh, although it looks very tatty right now. Uh, we'll get into that more in a minute. Um, but yeah, overall, it has actually done really well. Um, it's put on a good probably a couple of feet in height maybe two three feet this year more than I thought actually um, but yeah I can't even reach properly up there anymore um, now it is in its third um, year in the ground I think so yeah I planted it in 2021 um, and I had it in a pot for a number of years before that but it never got very big so you can see I've got four large plants here, um, four large stems, which are all over six foot before the leaves come out. Um, and the, the first one here in the middle, it's the oldest one, is uh, pretty much out of reach now. Uh, and this one next to it is basically the same size actually, it's caught up to it. But yeah, uh, overall it's done really well. Even these younger pups at the side have done quite well over the last uh, month or so. Uh, August was a little bit better than July. Uh, so it has started to catch up a little bit now. But yeah, you can see overall the leaves are very, very tattered this year. So it's been a really poor year for bananas in general. Uh, but even the bashi, which does well, even in a poor summer usually, hasn't done quite as well as it usually does. Um, it's mostly because of the really strong summer winds we've had this year. You don't normally get too bad um, winds in, in summer here, but tend to get the, the really strong winds over winter. Um, but yeah, this year it's been very windy over summer. So I've, I've had plenty of leaves shredded completely. In fact, there's barely a leaf on here that's still intact. Um, I've lost the ends of the leaves here, as you can see. I've even lost entire leaves. You can see I've cut some of them off where they've completely been snapped and bent over and there's more down here I've had to remove um, more than I usually do. Um, but yeah, overall I'm not too bothered about that. It's made decent progress. Um, as I said, it's been through three winters in the ground. This will be its fourth winter coming up and it's now at a size where I'm not even really concerned about it. When I first started growing this, I wasn't sure if it would um, make it through winter without much protection. So yeah, the main question I get about this plant is when to overwinter it. Um, and that's going to vary depending on where you are in the world. Um, I'm in the northwest of England, so it's going to vary a little bit uh, depending on where in the world you are, especially here in the UK it's quite different to parts of the US for example and um, but in general I'd say if you're in the UK you're not really gonna have to worry about protecting this until probably November uh, for most of us some parts of the country might need to consider protecting a little bit earlier um, especially if you're high really high up in, um, in a mountainous area you might want to look into protecting this in probably October or so. We certainly won't need to worry about this until um, at least mid-October, I'd say, if we get, unless we get an extreme cold spell, which don't normally get before November. Um, but I find I end up protecting this either late November, early December. Um, and these can take a frost. You don't need to, at this size anyway, um, if it was only a small plant, um, I've not really got an example here. This one's this one's also quite a large pup now. But um, if it was say only this kind of size or a little bit bigger with bigger leaves on it, you'd probably want to um, give it much more protection than what I'd be doing this winter. Um, but if it's if it's been in the ground for a good year or so, it probably will be at least. Um, hopefully at least this kind of size um, maybe just a little bit smaller this is a, probably about three foot tall 
Um, so yeah, it could be about this kind of size after a year if you've got it in a good location. This kind of size, you you probably get away with wrapping it with fleece um, like I do and mulching heavily around the base. I'll link last year's video if anyone wants to see how I overwintered it last year. Um, but I find in this particular spot here, it does pretty, pretty well. I've never had any dieback on any of these stems, the pseudo stems. Um, I wrap it with multiple layers of fleece and then put a plant jacket over the top. As I mentioned, I will link that video I did last year. Um, I even find it starting to grow out the top of there when I unwrap it in spring as well. But yeah, these can certainly take a frost, uh, a light frost down to minus, probably minus one, minus two. The leaves will get frosted completely at that temperature, but the pseudo stems at this, this size will be absolutely fine. Um, definitely won't be concerned until we get to minus three, minus four. Then I'd want this to be uh, completely covered. Um, but yeah, a, a zero degree frost, um, a light frost maybe, you can even get a frost at sort of one degree, two degrees Celsius, but that's not going to cause any significant damage. Uh, I do have another bajou at the front, in the front garden, uh, which isn't doing as well. Um, I might do a video featuring that at some point. I have my theories as to why it's not done so well there, and it's it's all about the location, um, a good microclimate and the soil. The soil here is quite good now. I've been enriching it over the last few years. Um, it's also got this protection of this wall here. So yeah, it's not a house wall or anything. It's only a one layer, a one brick layer thick, effectively. But yeah, that'll definitely help a little bit, especially uh, in the first year or so. Um, and you can also see that also protects it from the wind. The small pup here barely has any wind damage. Whereas as soon as they get over the height of that wall, um, we get winds from the north and the west. Yeah, north is kind of that way. Um, so this is mostly southwest facing here. So it does get the wind blowing against it here. Um, but yeah, overall, it has done much better than I thought, especially over the last month it's pushed out quite a few new leaves. Um, and the leaves you can see here, if I move that one out of the way, some of these new ones are absolutely huge. Um, easily over two metres in length, that one there. Um, and yeah, there's no flower this year, I was hoping it might flower. There might be a, a, a remote chance of it flowering this year, but it looks like it's probably not going to be this year. Maybe next year, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you when I release future videos, including how I'm going to be overwintering this Musabashu this year. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.